All right, y'all. So without further ado, man, this is one of the ones we requested. I forgot who was. I think it was Ty. You said the secret love language. I think that was you, Mr. Outlaw. So we can definitely go over it today. I got a definitely a dope little video to play. But even more so, I'm pretty sure that um, out of all of the five, I would say this is the most important for sure. So um, let me go ahead and play this video while everybody's getting their P's and Q's ready anyway. And um, let's get into it. So that's a good one. So let's get it. All right, we've got a YouTube question from L. Liam. How do you deal with wanting time alone and distance, like being too close to someone, even if you love them, can be draining? How do you take time away without damaging the relationship? Man, this comes down to what they're really asking. So time away, like that sounds scary. Like if you said, baby, I need a break. I just need yeah. a month off. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I'd be like, that would, say and, and what? Look, <laughs> everybody's different. So maybe there, there are people that love being in a long distance relationship because it's sort of dip in, dip out. Right. And, they, you know, they have massive swaths of time where they're not together. Right. So we're very much going to answer this from our perspective, Correct. which is like, for me, there is absolutely no substitute for proximity. Like, we started as a long distance relationship, but the entire beginning of our relationship was predicated on how do we get back together physically and spend time together. So, but then to hopefully answer the question she's asking, we have selfish time every week. So every week we have time where we come together and then we have time where it's like whatever the other person wants to do completely selfishly that they can do that. Mm. So, and that's critical. And it's, you know, uh, an hour here, a couple hours there. It's, you know, it's not days and days at a time. Um, but the important thing to note is because that's not what we want. Like we actually want to right. spend time together. And so, yeah, this, this one, I can just tell, like we're answering very much from our perspective mm -hmm. and I won't say that it's universal. Um, but I will say that everyone needs selfish time. I think that is universal and everybody needs together time. The balance of that you're going to have to find for yourselves. Um, from my perspective, it seems insanely dangerous to want a very significant amount of time. It just doesn't seem um, relationship protective. I hope y'all women listening. Ask yourself, um, is it distance from- I hope y'all women listening. Specific person, or is it just you need space from people because you're feeling smothered and you're the type of person that needs to process things by yourself? Because I think that's important. So like, for instance, a lot of the time you want to talk things out. And sometimes when I'm, either like my emotions are too raw or I, I just I know that I can't articulate what I'm feeling like I will say to you I just need space you know, um, so interesting okay. that is beyond misleading but what's fascinating is I think you actually believe that oh, oh what do you mean so it's not that I want to talk things out it's that I want to solve the problem you want to solve yeah mm -hmm. and you want to understand right exactly yeah <laughs> like I want to solve the problem this instant and you really want to understand like okay well what is it like tell me but sometimes I haven't processed it yet. And that was actually a really good impression, which is precisely why you need to get space. Because I'm not saying that my, what it is- You're not delicate very, about it sometimes. A hundred percent, which is really stupid and a bad tactic. So it's great. <laughs> You're like, I'm, you know, I'm emotional right now. I'm going to step away. Now, I just want to solve the fucking problem. But I've realized over time, you know what? When she says that, let her go. Yeah. Because I'm going back to having no emotional sobriety. I can predict, even though this is now it feels to me, I'm almost certainly in that, like, let's just be done with this and solve this right, right. now mode, which is not soft or gentle mm -hmm. or welcoming in any way, shape or form. It is all business. It's about deadly efficiency. And so probably best. Yeah. That we and possibly. I mean, going back to kind of what we were saying at the beginning of the episode, which is about um, learn from mistakes of the past. It's like, never have we ever got into an argument and it be like we've argued our each we've argued and pushed each other to the point of like solving it it's usually like you have to bring your guard back down you have to hear the other person it's not like we we've got two opinions we butt heads and then through the butting heads we solve it it's the the separation of bringing mm. down the guard so mm. for me it's when I know like I can feel myself escalate and when I can feel like I want to like force my opinion on you or force my emotions and like really like no you're not listening it never works out like I've learned that over the period of 15 years of our marriage so I've really learned to go Lisa you know yourself well enough that this there's no keep talking now it's never going to resolve it I know I have to bring my guard down so I'm telling myself these steps that I need to take and so in that moment I just say I hear you. I can't articulate myself right now. I just need time. And so I'll back away. And 
I think that that's important, understanding what you need in certain times. So with this person where they say they want distance, is it because they're just feeling smothered from people and they need to be alone? Is it that they're feeling being smothered by this one person or that this one person never gives them what they feel like they need in these moments understanding that I think is really important um so yeah it's kind of a tricky one I mean for me that was that was a really good one and how they broke it down I would say honestly because what makes the what makes this love language secret to me is because people forget that this is the only one that's predicated upon yourself you know, all the other languages, you know, acts of service, quality time, you know, attention, touch and all that shit. That's predicated for the other person that you're trying to show love versus the secret love. The only one, the top one that we end up losing <laughs> off the rip when we dating or doing anything is our damn selves. So that personal space definitely plays a role. And we forget that how, to be honest with you, what that's what really attracts you with somebody. I mean, they looking at you like, damn, right, you got your own shit going on. I'm trying to get in tune with that. And then whenever they get so tuned in with you and you get so tuned in with her, they kind of get get lost in the sauce and never go on actually what makes y'all even attract to each other. So yeah, this one, this one was a definitely cold. And I, I seen the doll, I chose this shit. So what's your takes on it so far, bro, from that video? I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Ty. Oh, go ahead. We can't hear you, Mr. Outlaw. You on your earphones? Oh, so you on your earphones. So we can't hear that, brother. We can't even hear that. Go ahead, go for it now. I can't hear you, brother. We might have to go to somebody else. Oh, there you go. Go ahead. Now I can hear you. Your, your Wi-Fi okay, brother? All right. I think his Wi-Fi ain't working too good. All right. Well, Zena, what you got from it, Zena? Zena, what you got from it, Zena? His Wi-Fi was bad. Oh, I thought that was you, Caleb. I was like, oh my God, this is real bad over here. But um, I mean, it I I do see a lot of women doing that a lot, like getting into a relationship, being so consumed within their man and losing themselves within that. You know, um dis distancing themselves from like their friends, their favorite hobbies or probably even their family or whatever and sometimes that's not good especially depending on the man that you're dealing with say if you're dealing with like a narcissistic man or whatever and he's one to like isolate you from like the, the your loved ones or whatever and then next thing you know you're in like this web that you can't get out of so, you know, that is I see a lot of women doing that and I remember when I was in high school um, I used to get extremely upset with my friends for being so like just into their boyfriends and forgetting about like themselves and their friends or whatever or missing like cheer practice because they rather hang out with their boyfriends or whatever the case may be. I used to get upset, but women are very gu guilty about that. So that 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 video to me explained it very well. Um, I think in our adulthood, I think it is different, but then people are still very guilty of it. And I can say that women need to be extremely careful with that. But also too, I'm not gonna sit there and just point at women. Some men need to be careful with that because I know that men kind of fall into a fat infatuation with a woman. And sometimes with that infatuation, they always wanna get to know more and they wanna dive into more. And I've seen that as well, mm -hmm. so. I got you. Well, I appreciate you expressing that. And even more so, I forget to say a disclaimer. We, I, I don't like to speak in general no more. I like to speak like, let's let's see if we can actually express ourselves about our own perspectives. So like whenever everybody <laughs> is based upon exactly what you're saying versus speaking in general to try to cater to people, that makes sense. Because I don't think nobody here is sensitive about anything, but I think that makes it more clear on like when we talk and express ourselves. Like I'm talking based upon me, fuck everybody else. I can't talk in general. But let alone, that makes it more like crisp whenever we actually talk, that makes sense. So I think that'd be dope. Caleb, your Wi-Fi is not good, honey. Oh, your Wi-Fi is not good. It just went in and out and roundabout. Like, I don't know if everybody got that. But I thought it was mine. Oh, that, that, that's me. That's you, Caleb. Connect to your hotspot. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. Yes, ma'am. Right away. Can y'all right. hear? Can y'all hear? We me? can hear you, Ty. Ooh, but Caleb, okay, yeah, cool. I don't know. Maybe there's multiple people on that Wi-Fi. But yeah, definitely connect to your hotspot. I'm doing it all. Go ahead, Ty. 
Um, I was just going to say that the main part that stuck out the most about that video was um, him saying like the importance of selfish time. Like, I think that's very important, like to have some selfish time where both of you guys can just go ahead and do your own thing and not have any expectations or not be like, oh, they're doing this and we should be spending time together. Like, you should be doing your own selfish thing too. Like right now we're being selfish, but really we're not being selfish because by pouring into each other, that gives us more to pour into. To By pouring into ourselves, that gives us more to pour into each other. Yeah, man. I I really like that. I like to actually listen to this podcast. He got some dope ass people on there. It's really cool. What up, Ashley Marie? You know, what about yourself, Marie? Miss Marie? I really like the video. Um, Again, I think I mentioned it last. Um, I almost said huddle. Last treasure chest. Um, It's important for you to maintain your singleness. And I even mentioned it so much so that I've literally said what was in the video, which was me being me is what made you want me. So if I'm no longer doing those things and it's like, then you don't even want me because I'm not me anymore. You know what I mean? So like me personally, one thing that I must have, it's a must have, have to do. I'm going to the gym. Like I'm going to go to the gym. I don't need you all at the gym with me. Let me do my own thing. You can go to the gym and look at your sweat booties over there. Like it is what it is, but we need to be, you know, maintain our own identity um, is important. It's definitely a pinnacle one. And I, that's the thing, too, I wanted to ask you women in that regard, too. Like, uh, what is, like, that saying of, like, whenever you get married, like, you're not the man that, you're not the man that I married. What is, what do y'all think is the root from that? You're not the man that I married. And then women end up just, like, disregarding from the man. I, I'm not married, so I don't know. Oh, all right. I'm just saying, what do you think? I, I hear that often. And me, personally, I don't want the man that I married. Right. I want you to continue to better yourself. So I think that shit is total bullshit. Person. I, I agree because also too the thing is with like evolving or whatever like you're gonna meet many different people like you can be the same person but many different forms of that person like I've said that to you Caleb like directly the man that I met back in 2020 is not the man that I know now in 2022 stop that nigga he, he killed that nigga whoa, whoa chill just chill <laughs> <laughs> no honestly I mean for me my, my growth pattern is is it's based upon, I'm just competing what I did last year. Like this year doing this stuff and then shit about to release this academy. I'm like, fuck, what the hell I'm gonna do next year? I guess I'll start buying property. Nigga, it's trapped. Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just topping myself. And honestly, and the biggest thing too, people don't realize too, is that the more um, I would say you get into things and you start to explore, meet people and stuff that you dibble dabble into, it changes you for a betterment if you on that type of path for betterment. For me, for instance, right? Me investing in myself, me doing trust, just me, all this stuff is challenging me. Better yet, it's put me in a different type of pressure. And, you know, everybody knows pressure makes diamonds. So, and the more so of that for me, it's just more so understanding, like, you know, I'm just trying to just get better than what I was last year. And so by doing that, I can handle more and more and more and more. You know, with all the investments in crypto and, you know, all this other stuff I got pending and stuff. You know, I'm about to evolve again. <laughs> so that's just, that's just what it is over here. But nevertheless, man, Reese, what about you? Oh, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. I got a question. Uh, so if it seems like y'all having too much selfish times, then how you counter that, or how you you go to that point, or fix that, maybe? Oh, when the, when the person actually has too much, when they ask them for too much selfish time, or they no, just like when y'all have y'all, if it seems like y'all both giving off the vibe of yet yeah, that is like y'all just taking too much selfish. I wouldn't call it all the way selfish. Like what y'all jobs is taking away too much time from y'all or from the relationship? Then oh, are you? I know what you talk. Okay, so Brian, like I think because your job is um, hours on end, uh, so I I think like a relationship is work, right? So I just feel like it's just one of those things you have to chisel out that time for you and your significant other, like you have to work for that time. Like when you're having those moments, because I know for me, like I always go by absence makes the heart grow fonder. Right. So it's just like, you know, stuff, stuff during that time when I'm absent or whatever, I'm probably flooding myself with things that I may, may think, okay, this is something that we might be able to indulge in or enjoy. So just whatever you and your girlfriend 
like or whatever or what you think that you guys may like i just feel like you should just try to work harder than both of y'all because it takes work to have a successful longevity relationship and even a big thing too brian is to understand too whenever you are home with her from work make sure it's meaningful make sure you're just doing some quality time quality time is everything in your case but even more so make sure it's things that um that keeps her in a, in a mental state of like why you guys even together and it makes it more and more work Obviously, you ain't gonna do this forever, so that's why it's more so having that game plan out of and putting you on and stuff like that. But that's just the biggest thing, you know. When you are home, are you just sleeping? Are you just lounging? Are you playing the game? Like, what are you actually doing versus like, hey, when I'm home, girl, I'm home, I'm, I'm with you, you know, I'm trying to spend time with you, and then like, you know, the schedule, you know, how this shit works. And it can be the and it can be the small things, such as like to just turning on you turn your phone on, do not disturb, or you know what I mean? Like, she's been talking about this one restaurant for God knows how long, whatever. You decide to surprise her and take her to that restaurant or whatever. She's been talking about that movie that you're not even fucking interested in. But you decide to take that two to, two hours out of your time to sit down and watch that with her. Like, it can be the small things to make big impacts. Um, You know, I'm not, well, I, I forgot where you're located, but... You know, I know picnics, beaches, stuff like that. Like you could do stuff for free that is memorable where you guys are spending that time together. The key thing that she said, Brian, is definitely, you know, a woman's gonna express the things she wanna do and just make sure you look to get them done. Not all of them, because you didn't need time for yourself. <laughs> but you definitely need you getting done. Go ahead, Reese. Reese, I seen you unmuted yourself. What, what's some key takeaways you got from the video, bro? And for your own, you know, perspective. Of this actual love language. You said what are some key takeaways that I got from the video? Yeah, yeah, and your own personal takeaways of the um, secret love language. Uh, oh, secret love language. I, <laughs> well, mean, I mean, I think one he was saying like one of the things like they wanted space or something like that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, personal space is actually the pinnacle love language. Like before you with somebody, yeah, y'all don't realize you had yourselves before, and they kind of get lost in the sauce. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like you got to be able to enjoy your own company if you want somebody else to enjoy it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love being by myself. I, actually, I, it, it got too company. I, I, done got, I done got used to it. I actually need to learn how to be or allow someone in my space now. I think that's probably where I, <laughs> I'll go wrong. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I think that's why they say singleness is addictive because it's too damn peaceful. I mean, in my case, God, yeah, God. yeah, it is. But they say, you know, more money, more women, more problems. So <laughs> they yeah. try to keep it simple, man. Try to keep I would say with with the more women, it's it's definitely more. I wouldn't say problems. It's just more attention span you have to give. Like, goddamn, it's like y'all. I got a lot of things going on, but better yet, y'all bring it to my attention. Like, you know, shout out. I don't really care about that, but. You need somebody to listen. But nevertheless, Taylor, Taylor Woods, Taylor Woods, you know, you said some things about asking your guy. He probably need to attend treasure chest one day. We can set that up. What's up? Bruh, I would totally do that today, but like we're in the middle of, you know, a little quarrel we had a little earlier. And it was honestly, it, it's so crazy you're talking about this right now because honestly about what's going on today, like it's conversation. It's just we've both been really busy and cooped up and I've been wanting to spend more quality time, but I'm not listened to and then I, I'm, I'm instead of booking time with me there's more work being booked instead so it's just like the priorities are not really you know at where you're saying one thing but you're doing another and I get quality time is important but the only time we really get to spend together is either early in the morning or late at night so it, that's not really quality time if the best you got is playing your video games I'm sitting there on my phone right next to you like that's not quality time like I want to do stuff that we did when we met I understand you're not the man I met before, and that's that's cool. Like like your girl said, growth is is what you should expect. Ashley and your, and your girl are, are almost ninety nine percent correct every time. But you know, you know, black women. But you know what I'm saying. You know, it's just like mm -hmm. I still want to do those things I did with you when we met. You know, that's why I fell in love with you. I fell in love with who you were, how much you cared for me, how much you you paid attention to the little things. You know, you invested into our relationship and. 
right now, like you have your own business going, you're making more money than people your age, you're doing it sitting on your ass at home. Like it's, it's something you love to do. Why is work still getting in the way or being excused as to why you can't cater more time to me? If I'm making money, I'm giving you half of my money. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make any sense. Like why, if I'm going to go the extra mile to do stuff that I can't do half as easy as you or make ha half as much as you, and I'm giving you half of that. Like, why can't you give me some of your time when you work seven hours a day and you can schedule it yourself. And I've told you repeatedly, you know, several times, like, this is something I want to do for us. It's, it's not a selfish thing. It's, it's a love thing. You know, just like your business needs time, your relationship needs time. Got you. Um, I definitely appreciate you expressing those things. And that's probably a thing that you guys definitely during this week weekend to really sit down and ask each other some real questions to each other, like hardcore questions. I mean, when it gets to the point of like a, a rabbit hole and just like a hamster wheel, because I've fucking been on a hamster wheel, it took some dramatic shit to snap us out of it for me to jump the hell off. But better yet, honestly, if I would just look back and just ask myself, why the fuck I just didn't sit our ass down and ask some hardcore questions? And then by doing so, it can save us so much fucking time, effort, and energy versus AKA my time, effort, and energy. End of the day, when you ask those questions, you got to be selfish. You got to, you got to ask yourself because they ain't, they ain't no you without. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't worry about the us in the relationship. It has to be you first. And right now, if you feel like it's depleting and it's the hamster wheel, and I was like, yeah, cool. Hey, look, we gotta sit our ass down. What the fuck is up? What's going on? If you're not getting nourished, then then you you're depleting. I, I don't know about y'all. It's not about yeah. Is if you're not if you're not growing, say that. <laughs> so that's that's just how I, I looked at it. And um, so I, I just that that's my recommendation to you, Taylor. If we, and if we honestly asking these hard questions, if we can't come to this shit like this is some raw shit. We got some raw people on here that's gonna actually give some good perspective in that regard. Then does does he really want to be around you? And that's the thing. It, and that's the thing. Like you're really spot on. Like you're you're really hitting the nail on the head because it's like so much self has been proclaimed so much of myself like your girl was saying earlier in relationships women give a lot i submitted to this man completely i left school i you know i'm not even your family like i haven't been around family for years i mean i'm still close to them not like he's like narcissistic keeping away from them but like i've been following this man catering to this man supporting this man while in the midst trying to support myself and grow as a woman being so young and it's a lot of things he had in life that I didn't get to have so it's like you're forcing me to be in this position of a, a woman mother type role and you know you have your business made you're making a lot of money you're, you're good where you're at and I'm not good where I'm at and you still can't let me you know you. like so at that point it's depleting but if I was to go find a man who wanted to give me that time it's not, it's not even about that. But you said a key thing. Taylor. You know what I'm saying? I'd be wrong. But sitting here giving you all I have, communicating that, it's, it's like you're still depleting for me when you know I eat. I got you. And so the, a, a real key thing that you said, Taylor, you honestly, know, you've, given, yeah. you've given so much. I'm like, <laughs> fix your Wi-Fi is going in and out. I thought it was fixed, man. Uh, man, my God. So I, I, was, I was trying to say, Taylor, that um, you said a key thing. That is that you you're giving so much of yourself that you're not giving your own self and if you're not giving to yourself and it's like you're giving so much that you're drying up yourself and and the thing about it that for me i learned that i when a woman does it y'all y'all can't help but naturally just give so damn much i understand that i really do and then it takes some times in life that you get to that point like all right i had a fuck enough you know it just get to that point and right now, it seems like you you getting to that point. Like I had a fuck enough. I can't give so much because I know I'm losing relationships and this and like that for us. But is there even a us? So that's what I'm telling you right now. You have to be raw as fuck. Ask this man key point questions. This is not for him. This is for you to know what the fuck you need to do to move forward. Because you're trying to grow. If he's and not also. Go ahead, I was gonna say also too before you ask those questions to him. Ask yourself some hard questions and be honest with yourself you know what I mean and then come to him get your thoughts together ask yourself the hard questions that you've been thinking in the back of your head but you've probably been ignoring you know what I mean and and then you know come to him when you're ready and, and you know and go from there that's just the best you know the best bet or the best advice I can give you because us as women like I don't know about y'all but I damn sure ask myself a lot of questions I damn sure talk to myself before I approach pretty much anybody about the situation you know what I mean? Because I want to make sure that, you know, it's not me. It's, you know what I mean? The other person as well. So 
you know, allow yourself that space and allow yourself that time to like really just sit down and break yourself down in that regard. And even too, you know, with the, with the, the time that you've been asking or whatever you can, I'm not sure if you created that space, but also too, another solution to your problems, create space, create that time. You know, I had a conversation you know, about spending quality time not too long ago. And it's just like, it's just as simple as taking a walk. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, that's just, it could be something small. So just allow yourself that space. It's really just the effort. I get what you're saying. It's like literally just the effort. Like, are you are you showing that you're committed to listening, even if it's the smallest, even if it's stupid, you know, because when you need your clothes washed and I don't want to do them, I still wash them. When you want to eat and I don't feel like cooking, I still cook because you don't know how to cook. Like you expect these things out of me, but can I expect you to go at least like a little bit of a way for me on something like that? You know, I might say I want to spend quality time. It doesn't mean I want to be wined and dined or taken out to a movie. Like you said, it could literally just be a sweet little drive or a sweet little walk. Like that's what women, women care about. It's a little thing. So thank you, sis. Thank you, Caleb. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just speaking for instance, and also too, I want to have Reeves, Reeves, like hearing everything that she's been saying, what are like some of your advice, bro? As far as this, uh, like her take on the relationship or the toll on her or? Yeah, the toll on her, just all your perspective, like what do you recommend she does? Well, well, uh, I guess I want to ask, because it seems like they've been in a relationship for a while, like years, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, three plus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is something that's that's very serious. So I feel like in this uh given juncture or in their particular relationship, seeing that they've been together for so long, that uh she should create a certain space for them to really sit down and lay out, you know, the pros and the cons of their relationship, you know what I mean? And so that they can balance out the things that aren't necessarily working for her and for him. You know, because I'm sure he has a lot going on, too, you know, because he's a busy man. You know, I'm sure she doesn't want a broke one, you know, so she will prefer somebody that's busy, you know, and that this comes with the territory. So it's about following a, a work life balance relationship, you know, because I'm sure all she just wants from him is just a little bit more effort than, than what he's been giving, you know, what I mean, or what he gave in the beginning. You know, and if they can create that uh, somehow, I think that she'll probably. Uh, be at peace or happy about you know the current stand in their relationship. Also, too, bro, would you say that? Um, would you say that what you just said, like weighing out the pros and cons, what year span or when do you feel like in a relationship or dating phase should that all be expressed? Well, I think this is just important too. Whenever you meet a roadblock or I guess stagnation, you know, far as a relationship like they've been in for years, you know what I mean. But I mean, it's too. I mean, it's, you know, you're so fresh. You, know, you don't want to start this. This is what's wrong with you. That's what you know what I'm saying. Like, it's not something that you got to want to, you know, start off doing. But you know, after a while of I guess being together and understanding each other's personality and just how they tick, you know what I'm saying. You can sit down and and and, and really say to this person, "I know you." You know, this is what I don't you know, necessarily appreciate a light in this particular, you know, juncture or whatever, because people change, people grow, people, you know, it's just, you know, how it goes, you know, but, but yeah. as long as you guys are growing together, you know, that's the most important part. Taylor, you about to say something from his response. He says, you know, to say, Tay, you me just give him your number because at this point, like you made it sound so simple. <laughs> I mean, it no, is. But <laughs> I appreciate you because he literally hit the nail on the head. Like it, it's the same way for both of us. You know, I care about his struggles. I care about mine, which is why I've been so submissive. But like you said, it's literally just that little bit of push, that little bitty inch. So I appreciate you for real. I can definitely say submissiveness is is the ultimate control of man, but it's also a kryptonite as well. To y'all killing, I hate not to say y'all killing yourself, y'all wearing your own self down, being too fucking submissive. Mm -hmm. It's it's a double edged sword to the wrong man. That's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, say a lot of men have been exposed to the wrong man. I know Ashley have, and I know. I mean, I know I've been I've been been there for the wrong woman. I guess you know what I'm saying. So it, like it happens whenever things start happening because it starts to drain you when you're giving so fucking much. That's when you know like okay, this this probably not not the person because I'm starting to get worn down. It don't make sense. Exactly. And but, it's one thing, like you said, it's one thing if it's like just the woman or just the man being drained but it's another if you're both actively putting forward an effort 
to do that when one has been lacking so much and the other one's been given so much. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, okay, you have to compromise a little bit for the one who has less that's still trying to give their all. Just like the one who has the most is, you know, you've submitted as much to support that. You know, like it goes hand in hand. So I but feel I you. I can say a toxic thing that I had to get over the toxic thing or that is that whenever I've been providing so much and when she started to get in her half like that, I'm like, I can't really believe this until it happens for a long period of time for her to catch up. I'm like, that's not even cool. And I was a stain of like, of me having that type of fatigue of doing it all, all the time. I'm like, you need to catch up to this, this type of essence. And I know that's not cool, but um, Ashley, I'm curious to hear your perspective, Ashley, on everything so far. Perspective on this topic yeah everything everything go ahead go in i want to explore what i've already explored oh. which is hey ashley girl <laughs> howdy 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 so i want to explore something i've already said stop trying to make things work stop trying to the thing and when i when i say that let me let me explain a little further Sometimes we often get into this uh, um, idea that, oh, I've been with this person for this long, this amount of years. Um, we moved two states together, even though we only knew each other two weeks. Like, okay, you know, stop feeling like time means that you have to expire there. Sometimes situations and scenarios are not meant to last a lifetime but brian brian unmuted himself i think he wanted to say something oh i'm sorry brian go ahead no he wanted to probably reply to you no you can you can keep going i just i'm, I'm gonna talk after oh okay. uh, finish you may not agree can i say something real quick i just love that brian's talking like hey brian can go on me can we just acknowledge that for a moment like brian he, came a long way. His he, took himself, he took himself off of you look oh, good shit, brian hey listen sorry brian if you disagree no but this is what I, I'm, I'm not saying. disagreeing i'm about to agree with you because you're basically saying don't don't force it because Huh. Damn, basically for the for, and, for, for, and you're so right brian and let me let me let me finish let me close this out and then i'm gonna hand right. it i'm gonna no, talk go, go for it go for it the, the thing about it is if you find yourself thinking thoughts like and this is one thing i was doing this for years and i didn't even realize it i would look at the person i would be with and i'll just look at them like hmm mm. Mm -mm -mm. and the things that you're thinking are not as if like five years from now we're going to be all purple and we go with our kids to the family reunion if you're not thinking positive things like that long-term things like that you're thinking shit like this motherfucker don't even like to take me out and he want to ask me for the spaghetti again twice this week i don't want pasta that's why i got this second gut now eating late with your ass you want to stay up and play the motherfucking video game you ain't even motherfucking walk me around the motherfucking aquarium in years like you know what i'm saying you feeling these type of things when you looking at this motherfucker and you got the audacity to ask for me so <laughs> I'm my, saying, phone, oh, my phone bill ain't even I'm, paid I'm, and you asking me for some pussy this, i'm saying I'm for, from I'm, experience I'm, I'm saying though, instead of having that talk in the mirror, which is that, why don't you tell the man that? Exactly. But listen, when you're in a situation, this is what I said now. When you're in a situation where you have invested years and years, y'all got memories. Y'all, y'all on the track together at, on high school turf. Y'all, you know, y'all at the Mardi Gras parade right after Hurricane Katrina, and you looking down years from now, y'all refugees. Y'all to move. Don't y'all have built the house from the ground up? You trying to, but you feel like you can't leave, right? You can always leave. Stop trying to make it work. If it's not working, it's not that. Walk away and say, hey, it's been great. It's been real. I love you. I just am not meant to be with you forever. We can be friends. We can do this. We can set those parameters that are healthy for you. But what is not healthy is to stay in a situation that you know is not going to get you to where your fullest potential. Like you, you know, you think it in the back of my mind. Oh, I can meet somebody better. I can have a better relationship. Cancel that shit. Cut it off at the head. I, I'm, I'm stuck on the refugees part. 
You you did scenario based. I was My like, bad. I, you know, I ain't never been a Hurricane Katrina uh, refugee, but I know people that have. Where we going? It's now. Hurricane Katrina. Like what? <laughs> I'm just saying, like some people are invested in deep relationships that have deep ass I, I guess, memories, and they don't want to let that shit go. It's I almost guess. a trauma bond at that point. Right. Yeah. So I guess that would be my topic because I was thinking about that. I guess when, like, when to know when to walk away, basically. Like, how to know when to walk away. I guess that's that's a good topic. That we, exit plan. I, plan. I actually go over that in one of my things. It's called exit plan. How to there do it. Exit plan. Also, yeah. Can we take also not me. Sometimes it is just because you walk away doesn't mean you don't come back. Right. Uh, but away. but but and that's and that's what I like to and that's why I like to advocate advocate to 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 women you know what I'm saying when I when I, when I talk to them because a lot of people shy away from com- uh, confrontation and so what I would like to say is that sometimes healthy communication involves uncomfortable conversations you know what I mean so you have to be willing to talk about things that may not necessarily uh uh be in your comfort zone or bother you because the way the problems that you're speaking of doesn't happen overnight. They happen over time and over years, and they now they're starting to fester and, and, and simmer within you. And so, just the way he may breathe, starting to irritate you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the way he blink, oh, that this that's motherfucker done blink ten times in, in thirty seconds, like that's damn. Man. <laughs> so, so this this is about healthy communication, and sometimes that involves uncomfortable conversations, but it must be had. And in order to have that healthy line of communication and a healthy relationship. Actually, I love I love that you, topic. You you hundred percent correct on that because my girl she the communicator and I hate communication. I hate talk and I hate see what I'm doing is I don't even like doing what I'm doing on, but I'm trying to do it, you know. But it, you're right about that the, the communication aspect, and so I guess by me, you know, like I think they just have to have that, like you said, the communication with them to grow because maybe it, it might work after this the talk they have, you know. So by me communicating and being uncomfortable in those situations, I can understand her more. And, and you know, that's how, I, would, I guess, after that communication, after that talk, we break that barrier. And now I'm more understanding and I can put her feelings first and not just push her to the side, you know. Uh, Brian, understand what she wants and need by her talking, you know. What'd you say? You're stretching yourself. You're stretching yourself out of a comfort zone because, right. it's like, the thing about it is, like, us as people, we get into this idea, like, it, it's kind of like a fear, like, it, it, uncomfortableness and fear kind of go hand in hand, even though it's not the same thing. You're uncomfortable with the communication aspect. You're not necessarily scared of it. It's just not what you like to do. But once you push through that, now it's like, well, I know this is like, then it becomes familiar. And so now you, and then look at you. Now you're on treasure chest talking to us. <laughs> And you're just doing your damn thing. And then next thing you know, your girl is just like, oh, I love you, Brian. Channel, you know? For sure. Um, I can definitely say too, man, when everybody talk, man, I, I definitely want to make sure everybody gets their perspective off. So let's, let's hopefully try not to cut everybody off. Sorry. I'm just excited for him. No, you good. No, I'm just saying. I'm just giving everybody that. But also, too, y'all said some key things, and we can definitely go over it one time, like how to make an uncomfortable conversation comfortable. I think that's a dope thing. Because, I mean, a lot of times, what, what's really uncomfortable and whenever it starts to become uncomfortable, it's because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Unfortunately, say you start getting parameters, you're not going to. For instance, Zena Roz, Zena, Zena is so conditioned into having, she was so used to our condition with other guys, stuff like that, like having uncomfortable conversations. And she felt like she couldn't express herself fully because she's not used to guys that, to, go, go ahead, go explain yourself then. Explain yourself. Oh, then. my. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've always, I try to just, I don't know. I have grown into person to, you know, go ahead and just tackle whatever head on or whatever. If it means taking a day, that's fine, but we're talking about it the next day. And, but the thing is in the past with exes, knowing how they may respond made me extremely uncomfortable in regards to bringing certain things to their attention. So the thing was with certain things, I would not, say everything like I would just hold it in but nowadays now that I'm older it's just like you know what I'm sorry honey like I'm not even trying to offend you I'm not trying to 
come at you. I'm honestly just trying to bring awareness of the situation of something that you did that I may not like. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can figure out a way how we can fix this and build past this and go, you know what I mean? Grow past this and go forward. So whenever I tell my homegirls that are complaining to me about their, their dudes and stuff like that, I'm like, have a, a conversation and let them know that I'm not coming at you in this regard. I'm just bringing awareness. Like that's a key word, bringing awareness to the situation. And maybe they might loosen up a little bit. Maybe they might be willing to hear you out a little bit and go from there. But yes, I've, I've dealt with that. But yeah. I'm mm -mm, head on. I could definitely say that to you guys. That's literally what I'm dealing with, Zena. <laughs> that's literally what I deal with. And well, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna give yeah. you a few things of what's going on with like how these women are expressing. If you guys <laughs> notice the comment did not is that men do not communicate or put up the effort to communicate first unfortunately to fucking say and it really create longevity as you can see women are like yo y'all need to be able to know how to talk and even more so just communicate and it, a lot of things about showing effort of communication like hey he just initiated an uncomfortable conversation that i've been wanting to talk about or damn i didn't know you had that in him just to be able to talk about something that i know may be uncomfortable to him or an uh, uncomfortable situation that we're having right now he approached it head on i like that that makes me feel comfortable so guys we need to definitely understand in regards to that like for me i don't give a fuck what i don't put no parameters on conversation I'm like brother just have a conversation i don't make i don't like caring about something being uncomfortable fuck all that we grown just talk about it let me know what's up because by doing that it makes it more easier to you understand and when you talk to a woman and you can talk to one about anything they're gonna be like damn you, why are you so different like that that's not really no it keeps it on no it's just all a flow it's all communication shout out you feel that way cool let me know Sometimes I'll be like, no, nah, that's just, that's just what it is. It's not going to be. You got to deal with that. If you don't, fuck it. I mean, I can't force you. But let alone something like, okay, I see where you're coming from. I might be able to attend to that. I'm not saying submit to everything because you're not, you're not the submitter, but you're more so you're the supporter. Women submit to you, but you support them in their submission to you. Oh, that's deep right there. That's deep right there. I'm going to say it again. Women submit to you and you support them when them submitting to you. That's how that works, brother. I mean, that's some bars for y'all. But let alone, man, Mr. Outlaw, man, everything being said, bro, how, how you feel so far? Everything being said. <laughs> man, it's been a lot said. Um, I've enjoyed it all. You know what? This, you know, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just soak this up this time. You know, I think a lot was being said. I agree with a lot of every, uh, with a lot of what everything has been said. Uh, I just, I, I guess, I'm gonna just say the the biggest key is to just not lose yourself. You know, part of uh, knowing when to leave, part of, you know, all those different things is just knowing yourself. Like, if you don't want to communicate with that person, just know yourself enough to know that, look, I really don't want to communicate with this person. Like, I'm really not even really trying to work on it. I'm really not even trying to, you know, even get past this. So, like, let me be man enough or let me be woman enough to just stop this, you know, that you know, wh or whatever it may be, or, <clears throat> and if you do want to, you know, make that effort, then make that effort, you know, like you said, we're, we're, we're grown. So it's really no point to kind of like hold on to things like we're kind of like in like high school or even like, you know, younger, like younger, you know, early twenties kind of thing. Or like you kind of just hold on to stuff because of the memories. Like we had so much memories, all of this stuff. And that person could have been the worst thing for you, but y'all got memories. Y'all yeah. got a whole bunch. Y'all got a whole bunch of memories and trauma and nothing but drama. But but you trying to hold on to this, so it's just like at this point, ain't no time. It's no time to waste to be like you know holding on to memories. The memories is still gonna be there, but like I need something more than memories, you know. For sure. Can I say I something too, real quick? Sometimes with those memories, I've noticed that people will have these memories, but then they'll forget certain parts of the memories, the bad parts that may have happened, the argument that happened before the good or the argument that happened after a, after like a, a great night, you know what I mean? Like that's something that people need to acknowledge because us as humans, sometimes we tend to bury it. And we can't, we tend to overlook it and it's not healthy to do. So, you know, yeah, the memories, the trauma, oof, it's just, oof, it's shaking my I was, spirit. I was <laughs> going to respond to that. Like, I definitely, I can, I can admit that in my, not in my previous relationship, but like 
in, in my previous relationship, like before that, um, the woman I was with, and like we had broke up and, you know, she had moved back to Nebraska and everything. And, you know, to me, it was all about like, damn, like, like you talk about all the bad moments, but like, what about the good moments? Like, you know, like it was like that kind of thing. And then after a while, it was like, nah, bro. Like it was really a lot of, it was really a lot of bad moments. And like, you just need to just accept that that's what it was. Like all of them little moments, little good moments was trumped and trampled on by, you know, those bad moments. And so it's like, that's definitely like something to like <clears throat> acknowledge and be able to take accountability of, you know, cause trying to hold on to somebody and they're like trying to be like, no, like, you know, whatever, whatever, but you trying to drag them along and you holding, you holding their emotional healing process up because you ain't trying to heal and you trying to hold on to, you know, the, the good moments when this person is trying to, has already reached that, that next step of like, look, good moments, bad moments. It wasn't good for me. I need to, you know, do my thing. So, I yeah. feel like the, the scale for um weighing good and bad is all fucked up. Like for instance, with me, right. I could have sworn I had a lot of great memories, but I can't really think of them as vividly as I do the bad memories. Cause everybody knows our memories. We remember shit based upon emotions and, you know, bad emotions and stuff. It weighs more than the good moments and even more so. We expect good moments daily. So it happens so much, it's kind of subconscious. But when this shit started getting bad vividly every, throughout the time, it's like, all right, bro, this starting to become a little too much for me. I need to change some shit up. So like for me, that's just more so like just giving you guys a cue on that. Like if you starting to feel like the bad is starting out way to good, it's like, all right, I need to do a reality check. And then by doing a reality check, you need to really accept that shit. I'm letting you know from my own experience, but I didn't, not to say wasted, but I've contributed years of my life to somebody that, um, unfortunately, say, you know, I lost her trust and all this stuff a long time ago. And I should have, I should have done this detachment a long time ago. But nevertheless, the exit plan that I did was very healthy in regards to making sure she was safe and good of departing from me and separating from me entirely until the very end. So, yeah, we can definitely go over that one time. But nevertheless, what what are some of your takeaways? Taylor Woods, I know a lot of this is on you, but what are some of your takeaways? Man, oh, takeaways already? No, I'm just saying some takeaways now. I mean, oh, anybody, anybody has a question? I just want to hear people takeaways. I feel like it's yeah, nah. What they, they were just saying, you know, it, it's it's really key to like be able to differentiate whenever your relationships either in, in a big turmoil deficit or. You know, it's just a few things. And for me, it's personally just been a few things. But because I'm so family orientated, it's some things that some people wouldn't let bother them that I do let bother me because I'm so centered around love. My family centered around love. You know, it's just the way I was raised. So there are certain problems I go through. I don't mind working through. So it's not like, oh, you did this. Okay, I'm gone. Everything we've done is out the window. Like, it's, it's not worth that complete detachment. It's like it's worth the work of like, okay, can we communicate about this? Can I, can I see you putting some effort into it and we grow past it? And like, that's enough for me, but I, I have been in situations where like things were really good and then turned really bad or things were really bad and then turned really good. So I had to like kind of keep it in my mind. Okay. I need to know when that line will be crossed that I can completely, you know, separate myself from it or that's the moment where it, it's time for me to you know rip the nail out of the wall and move on yeah, like do you not know that moment right now do you not see a moment yeah that, that means, i know that moment i know that moment it's just like it it, it ha it's not close to that moment like i consider my relationship it, it's not a marriage but i can see my relationship a marriage because that's what we want to do um and that's the steps we're taking right now you know living together having businesses you know growing ourselves we're in the process of that now we do have our ups and downs due to his personal come up my personal come up um but i do my best not to let that be an issue as to why it's like all in all we're throwing in the towel like you're gonna go through shit in your relationship everybody's relationship is different of course there's a toxic relationship there's a not so good relationship. There's an all right relationship. You know, the spectrum is different. Um, it, it's really just for me, it's like, it hasn't gotten to that point where it's like, okay, I need to rip the towel off. But it, 
there are some things where it's like, if I don't see this improve, like your emotional intelligence or your spiritual intelligence as a man, if I don't see, you know, you, um, you and your family's relationship kind of grow a little bit more as a man, I don't want to have a family with that type of family. You know what I'm saying? So I'm giving it a little bit of time because there is love, there is goodness, it's better than the bad. But there are things that I've, I've seen and felt that's like, okay, if this doesn't get better, this will definitely be my drawbreaker and make me be like, all right, like, you know, I got to start making changes. I got you. I'm curious to know, like, in, anybody here, like, do everybody look to be the, the, the perfect couple, the perfect relationship with somebody or versus being the best fit? That's two different mentalities. I had to learn that. I was looking to be the perfect person for this woman, and that's how she viewed me and everything like that. That's the pedestal. Versus looking at myself, I'm just looking to be the best fit on this planet with you. The best yeah. fit is the best teamwork, the best essence, how we move and structure and everything. Perfection, you know, I'm not, it's not like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant looked to be perfection, and it's process of being perfect. He obtained greatness. But he never got perfected. There's no such thing. Versus for me, I don't want to look for something that's lost. Hey, I know I can be the best fucking pit on this planet for you. So how can I do so in all these categories? The strength and this teamwork mechanism. Because at the end of the day, it's a teamwork effort. And by doing so, it becomes better and better. And that's easier to actually to, to go for. That's an actual like fun type of Like, I'm trying to be the best fit. I know for a fact in this fucking planet, ain't nobody work better with you than me. I know that. That's more of like a fun type of essence versus like, I'm trying to be perfect for you. Oh, don't shout it. That's too much. Per that's too much pressure. That's too much pressure. I don't want that. So it's like some things to some to really start to understand in your mentality and how you're going about things. A lot of times, a lot of things that, that causes us problems is our own mentality. And it'd be so simple just to realize and looking in front of for me. I'm just letting you know, like for me, getting my getting outside of my own way. Because for me, I'm just a rarity of a guy. And I know guys on here is a rarity of guys too. For me, when I give, I, I just I just give my all. And my version of all has changed throughout the years. But nowadays, I had to alter that my all to protect myself. And then by doing so, you start to realize, like, it saves you from, from record to yourself. Because in the day, whenever you give so much to somebody, you answering it to yourself, trying to get through the traumas and all shit you just did for that person. Like, fuck, oh, man, damn, why the fuck I do that? Like, you know, you start to be that yourself. Like, what the fuck wrong with me? <laughs> Ain't that wrong, too? It's just the fact that you had a different mentality during that time. Versus if you had a set foundation of mentality, are you changed to that? You can protect yourself the whole time. But Ashley, Ashley Woods, you, you've been so peaceful throughout this time. How have you been taking in everything? I was being good. I don't want to interrupt anybody. No, you um, <laughs> I um, I'm speaking from experience only. I'm not trying to offend anyone or be argumentative. Um. Again, I just feel like I wasted so like I, it's not that I wasted time, but it's like like why do I have to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, if this, you know, if it's if it is what it is, then it is what it is. I'm not gonna sit around and be like, okay, 365 days from now, we're gonna set a an evaluation for you. Yes. If you're still sitting at a three and you're not at a five. I'm going to put you on a 50 day probation plan. No. Okay. If it doesn't work, it's not working. I am going to make sure I beat that shit into my head and anybody I know, because it's just like, again, just because it doesn't work, it's, it's still okay. Like it just doesn't work. I just learned how to learn how to not hold on to something that you're not supposed to hold on to. Learn how to understand it, un recognizing the expiration date. Because then, like for me, for example, for me, for example, I recognize the expiration date years and years prior to me actually taking exit left. And now I'm like, I don't feel, I'm not beating myself up about the wasted time. But I'm like, bitch, is you really crying? Oh, damn, God damn it. And we knew this was not the one. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not going to change. The thing about it is people can grow and people can develop, but people are who people are, period. I don't feel like, you know, somebody can metamorphosize from a butterfly to a dinosaur. They're extinct. It's not going to happen. 
I don't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at you knowing that you cheated on me four times within the first three months of our relationship. And now we're fucking married and you telling me you got two babies by some bitch across town and act like, oh, I can't believe this. Oh my God. I'm so distraught. You I, I, want you keep, I want you to keep going, but I'm, I'm trying to catch on to the butterfly and the metaphors of dinosaurs. I'm just saying like nobody, no. I'm okay, but I was trying to but you get what I'm saying. You told me to mute myself. I'm trying to catch on. I'm still on the refugee ship from earlier, but you know, just just go for it. Go for it. I'm listening. Go ahead, go so, for it. <laughs> and uh people uh, could could change Ashley. You can't just go and see. You know, like people just like a piece of shit, you know, because uh, if they come to treasure chest, I feel like they can change. So I'm going to just put that out hey, there, you know. Hey, so. Come on, man. You better. <laughs> he needs to be the advertisement. And that's the thing. Like, when Ashley speaks, it's from a place of experience. So you have to understand, like, she's gone through this. It's a place of loss she's expressing. Like, just because she's saying what she's saying <clears throat> doesn't mean, like, this is why I have, she's my cousin, y'all. First of all, this is my family. Like, she's my best friend, honestly. I call her almost, we talk almost every day, whatever. But the thing is, like, with my relationship, Ashley knows what I go through. And she tells me things, and I, I use her experience, and I relate it. But I have to understand when to when to determine there's a line that can't be crossed. When I'm still, you know, we're still able to work on things that haven't gotten that bad yet. I have to remember when, okay, I have to give grace here because it's not that shitty yet. Or I have to... I see that there's potential. I see that there's effort. So she's she's just speaking from place of experience and a place of loss. And that's something we, I feel like we can all can relate to, but we also have to dis distinguish when into when and when not to apply certain things people tell us to our lives until it comes to that point. Because anytime Ashley tells me something, I'm like, okay, bet. Let me keep that in my mind. Let me keep that in my mind. Just because I'm not applying it doesn't mean I'm not thinking about that. I'm not looking forward to it. Because she don't always make sure she lets me know before, you know, I fall on my ass flat. But until I come to that point where it's like, okay, you really not finna change, okay? I'm trying, you're trying, I see some growth. Let's try to, you know, let's see where this goes. That's okay, that's understandable, especially if you're not in such a shitty place in your relationship and you have promise, y'all are okay. And that's where I'm at with my partner. I'm not willing to throw it out the towel out the window because I know it's not that bad yet. And I'm gonna give my peace, I'm gonna give my grace for that because he, has already showed me and told me that he wants to work on that. And it's some things he can't control that I can't control that he can't, you know, just change for me. So it's some things we have to compromise as well. But you just have to understand, like, when people are saying certain things, you got to know when to filter out stuff and when to not even filter it out. Just keep it in the back burner and then plan on that, like an exit plan. Like, I can't wait for the exit plan strategy because I'm, I'm ready to hear that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I've been thinking about it myself. So it's not that we're not taking what she's saying and, and I'm relying it and, you know, utilizing it. It's just, you have to realize when, when not you're dealing with that type of person and you know, when these things are needed to be done in person, you know, I can say this though. You, I mean, you all, what's up? all these women have definitely expressed certain things that a lot of guys, yeah, it probably went over your head, but a lot of times dating or just being in a relationship, a lot of times women feel like it's going to be work. And if they're already in that mentality, then yeah, I know y'all got shit to do to, to correspond with each other. For me, for instance, like for me dating, I don't look at it as being work anymore. I'm over that stage. I'm like, bro, this shit shouldn't be work. This should just be a flow. It should just be a natural flow. When shit start getting rough and like that, cool, let's get back to the flow. Cause this shit is not complicated. When we have evil playing field of communication. You know what I'm saying? So you guys, whenever you guys are dating, when a woman's in the app, oh, this gonna be work or this and like that, look, shout it, hold on, calm down. I don't know who the fuck you're used to dating or being with. I'm not that type of dude. I don't need the ultimate communication 24 fucking seven and giving you this effort and like, nah, just talk to me normally. It's gonna be a nice even flow. And that actual or that actual gives off the aura of, of she looking at you. Like for me, naturally, a woman just being a flow with me. Naturally, because I give off the aura of just being there, communicate, vibe, talk, deep stuff, we can't own bubble. It's just a vibe. Can I and say something real fast? Go ahead, Zena Williams. Yeah, because you were talking about relationships, you know, it's not gonna be work. Okay. No, no but I'm, I'm saying like I'm saying like in initiation stages, all this shit does not work. It's just a flow. But even more so, maintaining it shouldn't just be hardcore, like in mentality, it's going to be work. We got to put everything like that. No, it should be. I, a 
I think also, though, I feel like within a relationship, you're working on yourself, you're learning how to communicate, you're learning how to, you know, just go through the flow with somebody that's work within itself or whatever. There's work within a relationship, but there's just different levels to it. That's just how I feel within that. But go ahead. He was, he was on that. Yeah, I, I, mean, had, I had to say that. Like, for instance, like me and you, right? Do you feel like it's work? I've worked on myself. Yeah, but I'm talking about like being with me. Do you feel like it's work? No, it's easy. It's so easy. Peaceful as shit, ain't it? It ain't. It ain't nothing complicated. Fun days and chill days and funny days is twenty four seven, seven days a week with me. And then even even if it's like bad days, it's not bad. Like it's just what's bad days. We have an uncomfortable conversation, but it's not even uncomfortable because you just because you're still getting over that. Like you can just talk to me about anything. And when you talk, yeah. listen, and we just fix, we just keep moving. And like I'm so thankful you listen to me. I'm like. Yeah, it's that simple. Just talk. I don't know what the I'm not I'm not the type of guy gonna try to read your mind. I'm gonna try to prevent some things that I don't want you to be uncomfortable. But nevertheless, what I'm saying to you guys is that it's just a flow, man. Just just enjoy every day. Every day can be a vibe, every day can be fun. That's a realistic thing. That is actual promise land when you actually communicate. Just went in and out. Oh, yeah. This 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 Wi-Fi shit is uh, it's almost done. But yeah, I'm just saying, but nevertheless, everything should be a flow. And, it's um, going in and out. God damn. Is it still going in and out? I hear him. What about what about now? Is so, it okay? It's good. I think. Lord have mercy. Anybody hear me? It's interesting that's going out because you never had issues like that before. Never had issues. I think I think it's all good now. Okay, cool. So yeah, nevertheless, man, it's just it's just some just things to looking at it regards of like, you know, when you get into like this is work, I gotta put this effort up, I gotta be mindful of this and this and like that. It's like, oh damn, is it supposed to be this complicated? When did we get to this level? Like, for instance, for me, it got to that level. I was like, I was literally when she was about to leave, I was counting down the days, like, damn, shot, you got go. <laughs> when the fuck did they come and see? <laughs> I was like, 96 hours, seven minutes left. Shit. Like it get to that point where you're like, yo, this is too much work. <laughs> like, I don't like that shit. So nevertheless, yeah. nowadays. Like, if I'm <laughs> counting down the hours, you got to go. <laughs> I'm tired. But nevertheless, it's like how Ashley said. But uh, Reese, man, what are some of your takeaways from today, man? I don't want to run it too late. Or if you got any questions. Hello? Yeah, yeah, bro. We can hear you. Yeah, my bad. So, you want to do it again? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but, um, so... Um, I guess my takeaway, I heard like the women uh, keep talking about submissiveness and things of that nature. So I just wanted to, to point on the, the key fact that, that it's okay to be submissive, but also give your man a challenge or speak up for yourself in certain uh, situations. You know what I mean? Because uh, a man doesn't want a woman that's meek or, you know, easy to, to walk over. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, it's he's going to lose the thrill, you know what I mean? Or the chase up, you know, we, we have that analytic, like, you know, we are the hunter. Like, and you're the prey. So we want to always feel like, you know, and vice versa. You got to be able to tame that beast. You know what I mean? Um, And and, and also, again, just uh, on the part, you know, about having those, you know, uncomfortable conversations. You know, it's part of healthy communication, you know, and, and, and being okay with and speaking out. And I guess those would be my takeaways. And I look forward to the to the, to the topic, I guess. I was it? Um, I guess no one to walk away or something like that. You had that in the queue, and um, and um, having I guess uncomfortable conversations, you know, uh, for us had to communication. So those are uh, those sessions. I hope everybody enjoyed it. As, as I did. I'm curious to ask you, Reeves. Like, what do you feel is a what is what has been like an uncomfortable conversation for you? Like, what do you feel is an uncomfortable conversation in, in a relationship? Yeah, and even in dating, both. Oh, and dating. Well, I mean, I mean, it could be anything. I guess it's just all about uh, uh, perspective. You know what I mean? I guess, uh, like, like she was saying, like she had a, a particular issue with, you know, being drained or, you know, um, uh, feeling like she wasn't being heard or whatever the case may be. So is this? Is and and I think for the man, I guess sometimes it, it, you use a long time. Once you set the tone and you stand on what you say and, and, and the foundation that you're trying to set and what it is that you're trying to accomplish, everything else uh, uh, speak for itself. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, sometimes it, it, anything can be uncomfortable. Really, like, hey, babe, I don't like my eggs like that. You know what I'm saying? You might like yours. You know what I mean? So it might That might be uncomfortable to somebody 
or you know, I hate when you put your feet on me at night. You know what I mean? Because you're not like you know that. So it could be anything. You know what I'm saying? Any of those things. But but instead of letting it fester and and, and boil up to the point, like she was saying, like look at this motherfucker. She, he want pussy, but he ain't took me out or he, ain't, you know what I mean? Is this having those? No, I'm just saying is this is this is this having those those you know conversations? Like hey, nigga, like. <laughs> could you please give me a little bit more effort, please? Like, like, could you give me? Could you focus on me? You know what I'm saying? I get a little bit more attention instead of letting it boil and then you know, like, are you cool? Are you good? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you know what I mean. Nah, I'm good. I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? But you know something. You know what I mean? So again, just having those uncomfortable conversations so that you can have healthy communication and healthy relationships. For sure. I can definitely say it's not all, but I, I would say it's pretty much all women. Y'all give off an aura like something is bothering y'all, and men attend to annoy for some fucking reason. Bro, obviously something is bothering her. Just get, sit her down. Yo, what's up? Like, let's 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 sit down and talk about what's bothering you, because your aura changed. So, a lot of times in that regard, just men don't like to take it head on, too. But um, that's definitely something interesting. Mr. Outlaw, man, what is your t- key takeaways, bro? Key takeaways from tonight. Uh, just know yourself, and by knowing yourself, you'll be able well, right. having standards. There's nothing wrong with having standards. Um, you know, win is win. Well, all right, win is win. Okay. And, and when and when and when you're ready, to, and when <clears throat> take and what you're not willing to take. And what you're willing to endure and not endure with that particular person. Because sometimes it's not necessarily that that person doesn't want to change for you. It's just that I don't really want you in that particular moment of time. Like, and that's just the truth. And that's just something that we try not to tell ourselves or or, or we try to uh, avoid because we don't want to we don't want to feel unwanted by some. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. And accept those things. Got you. I definitely, I definitely appreciate that. Also, I got a saying after we go over everybody. I think y'all gonna like this new switch that I want to have everybody go through ment- mentally. It's gonna be dope. But um, Brian, man, what is your key takeaways, brother? Brian, Brian, my guy. I think he haven't. He not there. Well, all right, uh, Miss 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 Ashley Marie. What is your key takeaways? Well, one, I hate that outlaw was breaking out yeah. while he was uh, explaining because it sounded like he was dropping some good juice. <laughs> um, but I guess uh, one of my key takeaways is, again, just maintaining your individual individuality. And like outlaw mentioned, just knowing yourself before you step into anything else. And that's one thing that I struggled with I thought I knew me and then also not it's not just knowing yourself knowing that you're going to continue to be your better self so understanding that with becoming your better self comes change and recognizing that uh, everybody can't go with you you're not the same person as you was you know when I met you and if you can't evolve as I evolve then I understand that I have to leave you where you stand. Bye bye. And then knowing when when to set say thank you. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun, but now I gotta run. So <laughs> that's kind of what my uh takeaways were. So and I appreciate everybody tonight. I'm sorry if I interrupted anyone. Um I'm just an excited vibration type of thing, but I'm grateful to hear everyone and I'm grateful for all of y'all's opinions and time. You don't need to apologize, Ashley, for being you. Please, please don't. Please don't. Am I next? I'm guessing since I decided to talk. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey, y'all. Okay, okay. Queen ship. Queen ship. <laughs> but, um, okay. I mean, one of my key takeaways is that, well, I guess it's just more, I don't know. Okay. I, I look at, I, I kept hearing expiration date and that kept resonating with me. And The thing is, is that I've been saying that a lot lately. Not everybody has an expiration date, but certain people in your life are supposed to be lessons to be learned. And it's okay if they expire. 
And people, you deal with people through seasons. I look at people that come into my life as a tree. You have your leaves that go away during the seasons. They come and go during the seasons. You have your branches. They're not so sturdy. They may break. Okay, Medea. I'm just saying. It's the truth. But hold on. Don't sit there and talk. Don't it's sit the there truth. and talk. And then you have your roots. You have your people that are there for you. And the thing is, is that that's okay. Us as humans, it's okay to accept these kind of things. It's okay if somebody was just there for a lesson. So just take that as a lesson and make sure you learn from it. So that's just my takeaway. So, and Mr. Outlaw, we're not supposed to interrupt people, okay? It was a good, it was a good, <laughs> it was a good introduction. <laughs> oh my God, my fucking service. I'm about to put this okay. aluminum, I'm about to put this aluminum foil on my damn freaking Wi-Fi lit, God dog. Uh, you win you know, you know. Man, right. yeah, I'm all right. I'm about to put my aluminum foil on this Wi Fi. Go, take Miss Taylor Woods. Miss Taylor Woods, what is your key takeaways? I don't know if you're on the toilet right now. You know, I hope you finish wiping. But, uh, Miss Miss Taylor Woods, you your... literally called me at the perfect time. <laughs> but the way. A, a key takeaway from like a few key takeaways for me, um, is to literally, like a few of y'all said, like making sure you are understanding of who you are before you walk into any relationship you know like I, I think I love something you and Ashley were kind of saying Zena um and Ashley were like you know set aside what you will be okay with you know and what you're not going to be okay with you know and I wish I had did that a little sooner thank God I'm with someone with a big enough heart to like listen to me most times and understand some of the things I go through so he's doing what he can when he can um some of those things he can't control so it's just stuff I have to work on for myself so I do my best trying to differentiate it so it's not on him and it's on the person that is responsible for that treatment towards me and whatnot but uh, like I, I really learned just the, the importance of making sure the people you have into your you, you let allow into your space are people that you are be comfortable with being in your life around that time or just going through life with you um, and making sure you're able to be with someone who you can set boundaries with, sit down and have hard conversations with. You know, hard conversations are just as important as communication. That's still quality communication. You know, I'm someone who loves to talk and communicate and express how she feels. So just understanding how important it is to have those hard conversations, even though they'll be a little bit more difficult to take. Like Zena said, figuring out ways to not oppress them or bring up that those feelings they they that make them uncomfortable with certain conversations. So they know that it's just an awareness thing instead of a, you know, I'm coming at you thing. You know, there's so much I learned just about communication and barriers and, and healthy boundaries for yourself with people in relationship. And that exit plan, I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to hear it. Not that I'm like, looking for an exit but you know in every relationship you got to be prepared and like my relationship is fine but there are things that you know kind of make me teeter-totter sometimes so I'm trying to like I said not taking all the information but like keep it in the back burner so I can plan and be smart about it you know and not go through more turmoil that I've already experienced you know what I'm saying so I appreciate y'all yeah, well I appreciate it appreciate you expressing yourself and um for me one of my key take well my biggest key takeaway is um own you gotta own protecting yourself I mean, I, I'm seeing and I'm hearing women, you know, in regards to y'all get so submissive and nothing wrong with that. That gets to a point of the guy not even protecting yourself. You're so vulnerable because the guy don't even know how to protect you and the guy don't know how to nourish you. And you've gotten to the point of like pure submission, which is always great. But let alone when it starts to, you're not nourishing yourself no more because you're trying to give so much to him. It becomes unfortunate. And so for me, I mean, even the guys, you know, I, for me, for myself, I've given so much to stop nourishing myself. So I had to learn on, on protecting me. And understanding that there's levels to that shit. Nowadays, how I give access to myself to somebody. And that's just how you got to be, man. You got to understand. I'm just a reflection of what I've been through. Somebody obviously in front of me can be totally differently, differently equipped, totally different than my last or any like that. I'm not the same. <laughs> so I don't, I just don't move differently because let alone me ignoring my experiences and they keep happening, then I'm a, I'm a like a fucking insane person. Like, bro, how, how many times you can learn this lesson? How many times you can go through this lesson? You'd rather not take that chance. And so for me, when you get to a point of life, like you've been through some shit to that point of like, I'm not taking this chance again. That's when you start to get to the point of protecting yourself. And it's a really good sign of like, you know, that you're going to always be 
I got me, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be all right. I'm only take precautions accordingly. I'm already in precaution mode. And also too, whenever somebody is around, they understand me to where I'm at now. It becomes that more blissful. It becomes that more more fun. So I can definitely say for sure, man. And the biggest thing of uncomfortableness too, for me, um, once I let go what's uncomfortable in dating our relationship, it became so much more easier of understanding how to be open versus vulnerable. Like for me, I just accept a lot of things that I've been through, anything and everything, right? I openly would tell somebody and they can't use it against me because I just openly talk about the stuff. So how am I really vulnerable versus me going to the depths of me, the upbringings and all this and like that and details and like that. That's me more being vulnerable. But it gets to a while to get to that level. So you got to be you got to be all right with understanding the levels that you have with somebody just dating or just being around somebody. You don't want nobody to go to those levels and you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? I know it's easier said than done. But for me, it's, it's more so what keeps me focused on making sure I'm healthy when, next show, when I'm nursing somebody is understanding I'm nursing myself at all times. So how do you nurse yourself? You know, how do you go about that? And that's why you don't want to lose sense of that. You know, Brian, I know you're working a lot out long and you're getting like that cool. But make sure y'all be mindful of how you're nourishing yourselves. And even more so, don't look for nobody else to nourish you. You have to make sure you maximize that for yourself as well. So, yeah, that is the.